All right, welcome everybody to another Sunday service. We're glad you're here. A couple quick announcements for you guys. Uh, my fantasy football team is doing terrible, and I want to cry. Uh, I know you guys were all wondering that. So, uh, But first up, we have our connection cards. And if it is your first time here today, we want to say, hey, we're glad you're here. And we want to get you a little special gift and stay in touch with you. So we'll have you fill out one of these connection cards. Just ask the adult at your table, and we'll get you one of those cards so that we can stay in touch with you. And we'll get you a little gift and say, hey, we're glad you're here. All right, next up is Hume Lake. You guys got to get signed up. The price goes up very, 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 very soon. So get signed up for $225 hairs or uh, don't and be sad. So please sign up ASAP. Even if you need financial assistance, sign up. Talk to us if you need help going because we have some resources for that. So sign up. And our last announcement is be here 6.30 to 8.30 right here in this room Wednesday night for service because we will be doing worship, message, and small groups, and we want to hang out with you. So be here 6.30 to 8.30. Um, I got a bit of an update for you guys. Uh, next week, one week from today, will be Daisha's last week with us uh, at leading worship. So Daisha took another job, but I want to pray for her and pray for this service right now. But we have one uh, last week with Daisha. So let's, let's pray for her and uh, let's pray for the service. God, I just want to pray for Daisha as, as she heads into a new opportunity that you uh, keep guiding her path and you keep leading her forward in this uh, journey that is leading worship. God, I pray that she continues to follow you. And I just, um, I just want to pray for this, uh, this service, God that you help us uh, deal with a lot of the things that come with Christmas, that a lot of the uh, feelings of loneliness, and that you help guide us through those feelings as well. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys, if you'll stand up, we're going to go into a time of worship. You're more than welcome to come to the front if you guys would like to stand with us. Cancel so hope I will believe The raging wars you fight for peace You have always made a way A path of beauty you create And you know your love is strong enough To lead me where I am Nothing can pull me from your hand. No power against your hope will stand. And I know your love is strong enough to meet me where I am. Hallelujah, you will never let me die. 
heart, guys. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for this time of worship that we get to um, just come lay our hearts at your feet. I pray for this day that you would just um, bless us and um, uh, speak through Seth as he um, gives your word today. In your name we pray. Amen. doing today guys um if you guys don't know who i am my name is seth wiggin i am one of the leaders <laughs> i am one of the leaders for the junior boys and usually i have the honor to sing up on the stage and worship with you guys but today today i have the honor to share a message with you guys today so you know it's christmas time and it's just that time to watch christmas movies so i'm just curious how many of you guys have seen that movie home alone okay Okay, that is my all-time favorite Christmas movie, of, you know, of all time. And in case you guys haven't seen the movie, it's about a kid who's home alone, all right? Who could have guessed that, right? But basically, um, we have this kid. His name's Kevin McAllister. He's like eight years old. And essentially, you know, we all think of him as like this cute, adorable kid. No, wrong. He's actually the devil, okay? This guy is actually the real villain in the movie. Like, this kid is a psychopath. Like, okay, hear me out, hear me out. First off, the McAllisters are having a great dinner, right? They're having pizza, they're drinking sodas, like having a great time. And then Kevin like comes in, little Kevin. He gets all mad because somebody forgot to order him cheese pizza. Like he gets so mad that he literally shoves his brother Buzz, right? And Buzz like knocks over all these drinks and the drinks get all over the food, it gets all over the tickets and it gets all over the passports, right? And it almost like ruined their whole vacation, right? And then we fast forward, we get to the wet bandits, right? Harry and Marv, you know, hilarious guys, right? But then literally, you know, these guys are just, I respect these guys because they're just trying to make a living, right? They're just trying to like get on with life. And all they want for Christmas is they want to rob Kevin's house. Like what's wrong with that, right? Like they just want to rob Kevin's house. And Kevin like hears about their plan, right? And you think that, you know, he would just call the cops, right? You know, movie's over, just call the cops, have them arrested. And you know, everything's great. But no, instead he decides to become a psychopath for Christmas and decides to booby trap his entire house and turn it into a torture chamber, right? Like literally he like sets this guy's hair on fire. He literally puts a tarantula on this guy's face. Like, and he's having fun doing this. Like what a psychopath. Like, and he even, and like throughout the entire movie, all he does is talk to himself. Like, right? I mean, okay. But in reality, you know, Kevin's not actually a psychopath. He's not really a bad guy. He's just... He's just a little brat, right? I mean, you know, at first, you know, he's like celebrating the fact that he's home alone. You know, he doesn't have to obey the rules. He can just do whatever he wants, right? I think every one of us at, our, at some point in our lives have felt that way. But, you know, there's always this scene in Home Alone where that always gets to me, like right here, you know, he's just walking down the street at night all by himself. And then he looks to his right and he, and he sees like this house and he sees a family inside having dinner on Christmas Eve, and, you know, Santa, I mean, not Santa, Kevin is literally so, he just misses his family so much. He just wants to be with his family for Christmas. Like he even goes to Santa, right? Because Santa is so real. Like he's as real as the Santa that comes every Saturday here at Cross City, apparently. And literally he goes up to him and he's like, hey, Santa, I don't want anything for Christmas. I just want my family back. I don't want any toys. Just give me back my family. But even though he goes up to Santa, right, and like asks for all these things, it looks like this Christmas, Kevin is going to be home alone. And you know, um, I got to ask you guys a question. Do you, ever, do you guys ever feel like you're alone? Do you feel like things aren't going your way? Maybe things are a little chaotic right now. Maybe you're like the colleges, right? You want to like have that peaceful Christmas dinner, Christmas vacation. But then what happens is you have your little brother who's the devil. Or maybe you're like Kevin at the beginning where you want your cheese pizza, but for some reason your mom got Hawaiian. Listen, I don't care who you are. Pineapple should not be on pizza. I, I want to, listen, listen, I have sinned before. You guys can repent. Pineapple should not be on pizza. I used to be that person, dude, but it should not be on pizza. Or maybe you're like the wet bandits where 
You wanted to secure that bag, right? You wanted to have fun during Christmas. You wanted to get all the gifts, all the goodies, all the money. You had like this big list for your mom, but instead you get all these traps full of pain and suffering. Or maybe you're like Kevin at the end where you just want to spend time with your family, right? You just, you want to be with your family for Christmas, but for some reason it's just not happening this year, guys. I mean, maybe a family member is in the hospital. Maybe someone left the family. Maybe a loved one passed away. Suddenly, this isn't the most wonderful time of the year. It's actually the most chaotic time of the year. It's all chaos, no peace. You see, we've been talking about this idea of Advent, right, which is the season leading up to Christmas. This is where we celebrate the anticipated arrival of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And last time, Scott gave a great message about hope, right? Like, we can put all our faith in pro- and we can uh, believe in the promises that God has give- given, right? We can hope in that. But today, we're going to talk about peace. And peace is a word that's brought up many times, especially during Christmas, right? Um, And I think we all have like our own definition of it. Like if everything goes my way, I have peace. If I'm not stressing about anything, I have peace. Whenever I'm happy, I have peace. And if there's no chaos, I have peace. And a lot of us, including me, we tend to base our peace on our circumstances. But think back to last week, right? Like, was everything great? Like, I know you guys love taking finals, right? Like, did you guys love taking those finals? Like, was everything just perfect and happy? Oh, it's this week. Yeah, so think about this week, right? When you have to take (laughs) Yeah. Think about last month. Think about last year, right? Think of everything you went through. Like, was everything perfect? Was every did everything go your way? Or the circumstances the best? I mean, I know for me it wasn't. You see, if peace is just the absence of anything that makes us feel uncomfortable, then peace really isn't a reality for any of us. Because we know that our family is going to fight. People are going to leave us or let us down. Every one of us is going to experience pain, hurt, and some form of suffering. And maybe in this time of year, your life can be a lot harder to handle, which can lead us to ask the big question. How do we find peace in a world that is so chaotic? Like, is peace even possible? Is it something we can experience here and now, even when things don't go our way? Well, and they don't go the way we want. And I have good news for you guys. Peace is possible, but it may look way different than you might think. Now, think about, think about this. Like, 2,000 years ago, before Scott's time, you know, there was the Roman Empire, right? And these guys were the bad guys. This was not a peaceful time for the Jews. And one of the reasons why is because the Romans were not Christian. I know they used to worship pagan gods. They overtaxed the Jews, thought they were second-class citizens, and had a tight rule over them and their way of life. I mean, can you imagine living in a state where they overtax you and where your leaders are incompetent? Like, I could never imagine living in a time like that, right? (laughs) Okay, um, but the Jews obviously did not like this time. They didn't like the Romans being here, and they wanted to worship God freely. They wanted to do their own way of life, but the Jews, they still had hope. See, about 400 years before the birth of Jesus, we have the prophet named Isaiah. And Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, I know, shocker, gave this prophecy. It's going to be up there on the the screen. For to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You know, and um, on the night of Jesus' birth in Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 12, they were like these shepherds, you know, they were just chilling, vibing, having a good time, tending their flock, you know. And then all of a sudden, this angel just appears to them, right? It's like they got woke. And then literally, the angels, it's going to be on Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 12, they say, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, Bethlehem, right? A Savior will be born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you, and you will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger, right? And then in verse 14, a group of angels shows up in the sky praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven. On earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Messiah is here, guys. We can have peace. No more tyranny. No more taxes. No more Romans. God is here to stomp on the enemy and free us. He's going to deliver us. We can have peace now. Yay! No. You see, things did not get peaceful, right? The Romans still ruled when Jesus was alive. Even after Jesus' crucifixion, even after his resurrection, during the time of Acts, during that time of the early Christian church, right? Being a Christian was a dead sons, dude. So on top of the tyranny and the taxes, now you get killed for your faith. Things did not get peaceful. If anything, it got a whole lot worse. 
I mean, even to this day, right, we're still going through pain. We're still going through suffering. And there's other countries around the world that are being oppressed for their faith. There was no peace on earth. And yet Isaiah and the angels promised peace. So what happened? Was the prophecy wrong? Did the angels lie? Not exactly. See, about 30 to 40 years, Jesus was preaching about peace, right? And up on the screen on John 14, uh, John 14, verse 27, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You see, what makes this interesting is that he said this hours before his arrest and crucifixion. I mean, can you imagine the circumstances right now? Like if someone was to go up to me and say, hey, you're going to get crucified tomorrow. Get ready, right? I would be freaking out of my mind, dude. I'd be stressing. I'd be scared. Like crucifixion is no joke. It's like the most painful and horrifying way to die. And yet God, Jesus, he preaches peace. You see, the peace that Isaiah, the angels, and Jesus were talking about was a peace that wasn't based on circumstances at all. It was a peace that happened in the inside. Peace, as Jesus explained it, had nothing to do with experiences outside of his control. It had everything to do with how he faced them. He could handle it because God was with him, and God was the source of his peace. And God never changes. When things were falling apart on the outside, God stayed the same and could be the source of comfort at the worst time. And no matter what happens around us, peace is possible because God is with us and for us. As unlikely as that sounds, the truth remains. It's going to be up there. It's we don't need things to be peaceful to have peace. We just need Jesus. And because of Jesus, peace is possible no matter what is happening around us. Okay, so to elaborate, I want to play a game. Um, Who wants to come up here on stage? Wow. You guys want a free Frap House gift card? Like, what do I got to do here? Okay, Mason, get up here. Okay, we're going we're gonna to have Mason up here on the stage, right? Okay. Mason, I'm going to have you stand right over here. It's going to be here on this square thingy right there. There you go. Good boy. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Hopefully, you guys know what this is. If you don't, who said it's a C? Oh, my. <laughs> this sermon has been brought to you by the letter S. Wait, can you guys see that? Okay, good. You guys can. Okay, so what we're going to do is, Mason, this is what we're going to do. You're just, I'm just going to ask you like a couple of questions, and you're just going to answer them to the best of your ability, okay? No pressure, okay? This isn't the finals, okay? Okay, what letter is it? Wow. What color is it? And is it on the table, yes or no? I don't know how he does it, everybody. Man. Okay, Mason, get over here. Get closer. Okay, now zoom in. Go closer, 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 closer. There you go. Okay, no, closer. What are you doing? Okay, what letter is it? What color is it? And is it on the table, yes or no? Wow, good job, Mason. Okay, okay, I don't know. Okay, now this is what I want you to do. Put this blindfold on. Okay, okay, dude, it was perfectly fine when you... It was perfectly. <laughs> okay. I see you just wanted to look better on it. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, Mason. <laughs> Here, we'll put the hood on for good measure. Okay. So, turn that way. Okay, Mason. What letter is it? Okay. What color is it? And is it on the stool, yes or no? Wow. Okay. Okay. Okay, you can take off the blindfold. (laughs) All right, everyone give a hand up for Mason. He was such a good participant to this game. All right, so you guys might be wondering, what does the letter S have to do with the word peace, right? Well, I'm here to tell you this. So Mason... He, he, I put him through three different circumstances, right? The first one was he just saw it normally. You know, it was an S. It was just, it's white. And, you know, it's on this, the table, right? That was easy. Then I saw, then I did another one where he zo- it was super zoomed in. And the third one, he was just blind. He couldn't see. There was a blindfold, right? But under all three circumstances and perspectives, did the S change? Right, the S didn't change at all. But, you know, it did change. The only thing that changed were his circumstances and his perspective. Because you see, it's easy to say that the S, it's, that it's an S, right? It's white and it's on the stool when you can actually see it, right? In the same way, it's easy to say that God is good. God is in control and God is with you when you actually see it, when you actually feel like it, when everything's going your way. For example, 
oh God, you're just so good. You helped me get an A on my finals test with that, that I didn't even study for. Oh, oh God, you're so in control. You helped me beat Eric by 0.6 points on fantasy football, God. And even though I'm not going to make the playoffs, I'm still proud. Of, I'm still happy about that, God. Oh God, you are so with me. You know, life is great. Everything's just going my way. You know, um, I went on a really great day. My parents got me a brand new car. Uh, worship was just amazing. They, you were here. Like, honestly, like, they played my favorite song, Another in the Fire, and it was fire. And I know as I walk through the fire of life, you're standing right here next to me. Like, life is so peaceful. You are the prince of peace. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, activate. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Praise Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen in the house of the Lord today? Yeah. Mm. And you see, the funny thing is that that's totally valid, right? I mean, God is still all those things during the good times. But in the game, I asked Mason to put on a blindfold, right? And when he put on the blindfold, it probably wasn't easy for him to say that it's an S, that it's white, and it's still there, right? Like he probably, what, he couldn't see it. He just had to believe it still was the same. So what if life puts a blind, what if life puts a blindfold on us, right? What if chaos comes? What if things just don't go our way, right? I mean, okay, God, I failed the test that I studied for. Or, okay, God, another loss in fantasy football. I'm not making the playoffs this year. And I'm going to face the punishment. And, oh, oh, wow, my car got totaled. Oh, cool, my girlfriend dumped me through text before prom. Um, that's just great. Okay, my parents are splitting up. Why is that happening? Why is my brother in the hospital? Why is my friend in a coma and paralyzed? Um, I get that you saved me and that it could be so much worse, but why is it so much better for everyone else? Everyone suffers, but why am I just suffering a little bit more? Like, I don't understand you, God. I can't see, like, why me? It's not fair. Why do I have to suffer? Well, aren't you a good, good father? I thought that's who you are, like the song, right? I mean, you, you're just not doing it for me anymore. I'm done. I'm lost. I don't know where I'm going. Like, where did you go? Where are you? I'm right here, Seth. I never left. You see, I am the same God in control yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You can be strong and courageous knowing that I will never leave you or forsake you. If you make your bed in the depths, I'm there. If you make your bed in the heavens, I'm there. Where can you run from my love? Where can you hide from my presence? If I cause all the good, all the bad to work together for your good, because I know that you love me and I have called you for my purpose. Listen, I know that you're suffering and I know exactly what you're going through, right? I mean, look at the holes in my hand, dude. I know. I, and you don't understand everything and that's okay. And I know you're not okay and that's okay as well. But I'm not asking you to understand everything that I'm doing. All I'm asking is, will you trust me? Do you trust me? You know, it's a, hard, it's a simple question, but it's a hard answer, right? I mean, I mean, ever heard of that Christmas phrase, like, seeing is not believing, believing is what you see? It's kind of the same concept here. I mean, when all you see is just chaos, it's hard to believe in God, and it's hard to believe in peace. And that's when the lies come in, right? Like, oh, God, you're not good. You're not in control. You're not with me. But what if we give a little faith? What if we say, God, I don't see what you're doing. I'm going through pain right now and it hurts, and I'm not okay. I don't understand everything, but I believe that you're with me. I believe that you're in control, and I believe that you are good, and that's good enough for me. When you start to believe in him and who he is, you can find comfort in the truth. Even when everything around you is chaotic and not going your way, you can have, you can see peace. We don't need things to have, we don't have to have peaceful circumstances to have peace. We just need Jesus. Guys, you don't need to wait for the storm to settle in order to have peace. You can still have peace regardless of the storms. And when there's no peace, we just got to bring it. It's going to be our next point right there. It is. Yeah. When there's no peace, we just got to bring it. And one of the steps we have to do, the first thing we have to do to bring this peace is first we need to identify what the chaos is in our lives. Like what are you going through right now that's causing you to not have peace? Like trust me, I do this all the time. 
I like to hide what's happening in my life, you know, for pride's sake. I don't like bringing up my problems. I don't like bringing up that I'm going through chaos. And frankly, just I just want to face it. But the only way you're going to find peace is you got to realize that there's a problem. First way to first step to solving a problem is to, is to see that there is one, right? Second, we need a vent to God. What are you feeling right now? Like, what is, how do you feel, right? Like, tell him exactly what you desire and don't desire, what you want and don't want. Let him know. If you're angry, be angry. If you're sad, be sad. If, you, if you're frustrated, be frustrated. And if you're happy, be happy, right? But let him know. He wants to listen. He wants that relationship with you. He wants to connect with you there. Not only are you going to understand where you are with God, but it also leads to our next point, which is we need to remind ourselves who, what, and where God is. You see, I don't know if you have to wear a cross chain around your neck. Um, I don't know if you have to wear a WWJD bracelet around your wrist. I don't know if you have to get a shirt that says Jesus loves you across your chest. But maybe we got to read the word more. Maybe we've got to pray more. Maybe we've got to do devotions more. Maybe you've got to surround yourself with people that can remind you, encourage you, and help you remember. Maybe go to small groups more. And listen, I am not saying if you believe in Jesus hard enough that all your problems just disappear, like everything's going to start going away. That is not what the Bible teaches. But what I am promising you, what God is promising, is, is a life where you don't have to do it alone. Where regardless of the chaos, you can find peace. Guys, some of our friends, they could be going through some chaos right now, and maybe you are in a season of peace right now where you know the truth about God. Maybe this is your chance to remind them, encourage them, tell them who Jesus is, tell them the truth, that God is good, God is in control, and God is with you. You see, they don't have to be lost in the chaos. They can have peace. They can have peace that doesn't depend on, on the ideal circumstances. They can have the, the peace that Isaiah prophesies, that the angels proclaimed, and what Jesus taught and died for. But guys, this peace was possible because Jesus made it possible. He died on the cross for all of our sins. He did not just do this just to follow the will of his Father, but he lo- because he loves you. He wants to have a relationship with you right here, right now, and one that will last for all of eternity. For everyone who accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can be at peace about where you will spend eternity, right? You can have peace knowing that you're saved. That's not going away. Don't, don't think that you're not enough. God died for you. That's more than enough. And guys, heaven's going to be amazing. I mean, I mean, it's going to be more perfect than I can ever describe. I mean, if I have a mansion, like you guys are invited to the cookout. Like it's going to be amazing up there. But guys, You don't have to wait for heaven to experience peace. You can still experience peace right here on this earth, right now, regardless of the circumstances. But it all starts with Jesus. It all starts with him. If you haven't accepted Jesus as your um, Lord and Savior, um, when we go in the small groups, please talk to your leaders. Please talk to me. I mean, I like most of our leaders. And um, (laughs) I'm kidding. (laughs) I love all, I love everyone. I love, I love all the leaders here. They're like family to me. And um, we would love to speak to you and talk to you about Jesus and talk to you about the relationship God wants to have with you. But before we break on off into small groups and answer some questions, um, I'm going to pray us out. Okay. So bow your heads with me. Um, Heavenly Father, um, I just thank you, Lord, that you have brought us here today. Um, I think we take it for granted how much we have from you. I thank you that we have this building. I thank you that we have this space to worship you, regardless of the craziness that's happening out there. I thank you, Lord, that we were able to get here, oh Lord, and just be here and learn more about you. And Lord, I don't know what everyone else here is going through right now, but amidst all this chaos of life, God, I just pray, Lord, that you would continue to remind us daily who you are. Remind us that you're good. Remind us that you are in control. Remind us that you're always with us. I pray, Lord, that you will surround us with the right people. I pray, Lord, that you will give us time to sit down and, re- and, realize- and remember who you are. And I pray, Lord, that whoever has not accepted Christ, that he- they would have the courage to do that today. Lord, we're just, I'm just so thankful for you. and I love you. We love you so much. And it's your name I pray. Amen.